up, world? And welcome to the All More Real Show. This is where we discuss issues pertaining to the socioeconomic system and how they relate to everything. Why and how are the fundamental questions. Answer them enough, you get to the truth. I'm your host, Alex, and my guest today is originally from Kyrgyzstan, Central Asia. Although we grew up on the other side of the world, we share a lot of the same core beliefs and values. He's traveled to several countries and shares with us his observations and experience, as well as his heartfelt passion to make the world a better place, along with the realization that the answer we seek is already presented to us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my international guest, Samit Albatamov. How, how, how bad did I, yeah, I was going to ask, how bad did I butcher that? <laughs> I think that sounds like, doesn't have to sound like uh, the original, like, you, you may say whatever you want. It, it sounds like the American version of your name, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds, yeah, it's like everything changes, so let be it, well, it doesn't it, need correction. Yeah, I got you. Well, it's a cool name either way, man, really, I like it. Thanks. Uh, so, you know, um, well, we were just uh, talking a bit ago about technology and yeah. So what's, what's your, in general, what's your experience been when you were younger and stuff? What did you understand of money? Yeah, man, like, like everyone else, I grew up in poverty and like I've seen everything else. What's possibly hunger, poverty, desperation. Where, where did you grow up? What area? I grew up in Central Asia, I mean, in Kyrgyzstan, it's called. Kyrgyzstan, okay. Yeah, it was, it was part of the USSR, mm. the Soviet Union. Right. It was like a cold, the Cold War was in its peak, but the United States and the USSR, like, the communi- communist socialist system, yes, capitalist system. So it was like, you know, yeah, it was, these were the times, like, 1980s, 1990s. Mm-hmm. Like it was definitely a war. I mean, war of ideas, war of two big empires. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just grew up at those times, especially in like nineties, when the Soviet Union collapsed. It was just something. I mean, it was like a the times of the desperation. Like I just felt like everything, you know. And I, I I understood like how these empires do to do what they do to each other. And like, yeah, it's like, it was a war mm-hmm. since like, and we were introduced into capitalism, the wild capitalism, like where you had to fight for your own interests and had to earn money, had to do some business and stuff. Yeah. So we're living in the capitalism from 1990s in a sense. Yeah. I think it was, uh, uh um, Annex, or you got your uh, independence in '92, I think it was. I looked up, um, but somewhere it was like a not an independence. It was, it was a collapse of the system. I mean, of the communist socialist system that was in place. I see. In a sense, yeah. So obviously, it wasn't. It really that wasn't that much good. I mean, like yeah, it was sometimes just ex- exaggerated. Like too negatively, sometimes too positively, but it was just a normal system. Yeah, it was like not capitalist. Everything was controlled by the state. And you're talking about in sense. communism, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like you know, every like all everything had to be planned by the state, and people had really no voice in there. And yeah, there was no freedom and democracy in, the, in that system. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's always interesting to me because. You know, I've only lived in the United States, um, which, of course, has been capitalist since I've been born. Um, yeah. And I, I hear of these different types of regimes and and, and empires in these different areas. Um, and I, I don't I mean, when you read the definitions, you can it kind of makes distinctions. But when I hear people talk about it, like you just said, I mean, I'm sure that on the inside, there's a lot of differences, but, you know, like here, even here in the U.S., everything is state controlled also. 
I mean, the education, the legal system, the, you know, the, the prisons, the, the f- food, it's all regulated and, and controlled. So I, I don't know. I just wonder what the difference is. Um, I think, I mean, the, the, all, the only freedom in the, in the United States in the capitalist society, I think it's the, it's the money. I mean, it's the finances that, and, and those are the only fields that the individual is given uh, like a freedom. Like you can earn, like uh, you're free to earn, like, you know, money, your finances, and you just can choose from all the products. Like, I think that's the only freedom they give. I mean, the elites. Well, you know, that's actually, that's not freedom though. I mean, in my opinion, and, and I know you're very aware of this yeah, stuff. Like an illusion of freedom, at least. Exactly. Like well, that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the freedom to buy things you can't afford. And, you know, the more you make, uh, the more they take. And that's, that's a proven thing with taxes. So if I, you know, if I only work a job, I make 20 an hour, they're going to take so much. But if I go make a hundred an hour, they just take more. Or if I make, you know, like we, we were messaging a little, um, uh, the other day about, you know, the difference in the United States and, and like doing your own business. And yeah, that's, kind of the way to go you know because you get to keep more of your your earnings and stuff but it's very difficult because they make so many you know so much red tape and and you have to pay all these um um you know uh what whatever the word is um uh i think i think it's like historically united states was a country that like it's a it's a country that was formed by the immigrants and well, like you know its system its history is different so it was I stolen think. by the immigrants yes <laughs> in a sense like it was owned yeah it was like the the population of europe just expanded to these other continents and it was i think like it was an expansion of the old system from old europe to the new world, they had to say. Right. And it was like, yeah, I think it was just an extension of the system of the old system. Exactly. Yes, Sam, it was. And that's, you know, it all throughout history, obviously, there's there's good people mixed in and stuff like that. But, you know, when everything is basically ran by the the state or the government. So I think, I think in a sense, like United States has got a good, uh, like how to say experience in sorting out people. Like it's got a very long history, like three or 400 years of experience of selecting people. And then, you know, passing through the, the sieve and getting only the intelligent ones and wealthy ones. And collecting them in one place and just, you know, it's, I think it's historically in a sense. The methods are, are different. And, um, you know, also like we talked, uh, the fact that they have, uh, spread the empire through, um, you know, economic means, um, and essentially have a stranglehold on a lot of the, you know, different countries and they've partnered with the more powerful countries, whether they're authoritarian regimes or not. So, I mean, it's really, if, you know, money is everything. So it's really easy to see how, yeah, they get the best people here because they're offered the world basically, you know? Um, So I think it, it happened like naturally, like all from the old world in Europe. It was uh, times in Europe where there was poverty. There was like in a lot of populations of like people from Europe, from Netherlands, from Germany, from Ireland, from U- UK. Like they were just trying to, they were just going to a new continents and looking for a better life. I mean, right. it was a natural human uh, wish to live at least, you know, they were escaping from this authoritarian system that wasn't set in europe like you know there were kingdoms and these kings and lords they were very despotic in a sense like they were increasing taxes Mm -hmm. and these people i mean these lower classes that were in europe i mean they they really wanted to live i think a freer life and 
uh, yeah, they wanted to live a decent life, and yeah, and they were looking for more opportunities somewhere else. Yeah, so in I, a sense, it was a natural, natural like an occurrence, I think. Right. In a sense, yeah. Oh yeah, like definitely. everybody is doing these days. I mean, all these immigrants, migrants, they're doing this basically the same thing. Right, escaping their authoritarian. Despotic governments, they want, they plus they're looking for more economically advantaged countries to right. earn a, a decent living. I mean, right. We can understand these people. Exactly, Sam. And, and that's, that's uh, one of my issues in general with the way that things are now. When, of course, you, you're going to have more and more people fleeing and refugees because of, you know, the way the world is, is headed. Uh, but yeah. you know, exactly. I think you're right. That's originally why people came to the U S and aside from trying to expand their imperialism, but, um, the average, yeah, it was person, not, it was not an imperialism that wasn't set in place. Like it, you know, it just came naturally. Like, you know, it was, um, like an evolutionary thing that just pushed this way. Like nobody really constructed the U S as it is like, you know, it just happened gradually. Like by the historical things that happened in the past. Well, the idea behind it, uh, you know, is is right. I mean, the idea of freedom and democracy. Yeah, I mean, pe these people really wanted to be free, and they wanted a decent life, and they and they built a country based on their wishes, and they really wanted it. And exactly. It's like a population society, like uh, who descended from continental europe to new continents and they they just built a new home i mean based on their belief systems exactly and yeah they didn't plan it because they wanted it like you know it just happened naturally it came naturally yeah so it was a historical inevitability in a sense like it's, it was inev inevitable in a sense like yeah and, and new continents in australia in New Zealand, I mean, it's the. I think they were the, the same. They were they were built the same way. I think. Well, you know, I, by the expansion of the colonial colonialist powers, mm -hmm. because they were oppressing their those people there in the continental Europe, and these people are escaped. It. I mean, they they escaped. They were looking for better places. Yeah, I think it's important yeah. to note that I I agree with what you're saying, um, and I. I believe that that's basically now how people feel who say they love America or say, you know, they wave the flag and these types of things. I, I think they, 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 they like the idea of it. I mean, they, they're thinking in the freedom and democracy sense, you know, but the reality yeah. is that's not what it is anymore. I mean, it hasn't been that way for a long time. And yeah, it's, it's it's changed a lot. Yeah, it's changing, and, and everything's cha in change. You know, and slow and gradual change. Right. Yeah, and you're uh, you're in Sweden right now, right? Yeah, I'm in Sweden right now. Yeah, how many? Uh, you say you traveled around. What, how many times have you been there? Yeah, I think a couple of times. Well, I just come. I, you know, I am just kind of person like. Who travels around and like I? It's interesting, like when you see new countries with new systems right. living their lives, and it's yeah. I don't know, maybe like Sweden and the Scandinavian countries, they were part of the socialist system, like that. And I think it's familiar to me because I lived also in the socialist communist system before. Right. So I think I got this little bit of familiarity that attracts me to it. Mm -hmm. What's yeah, it? No, I really. <clears throat> in general, what is it like there overall? I mean. The... Yeah, I think yeah, uh, most of the most of the people's most of the people's lives that expect people's lives are controlled by the state. Yeah, even all these alcoholic beverages, they're strictly they're sold by the state. Like sold, yeah, by the state company in a sense. Well, you know, I read that actually about Sweden, but it's the same in the U.S. It's all and people are very obedient, you know. Like you'll be amazed at how obedient these people are. I mean, they just because they respect the state, they believe in the state. Really, they think that the best out there can only be done by the state. You know, 
That's interesting. These people are being conditioned. Like, you know, they, they live in, in the kingdoms, like Swedish kingdoms and all these things. You know, I mean, all Europe was full of kingdoms. I mean, the, the, basically the system was feudalism and it was right. like based on kingdoms. Mm-hmm. What kings said, it was a law in a sense. And you have this collectivity, like people trust the, the state. And yeah, but the society, I think, is good. Like people trust each other. And they got this system of trust. Right. Yeah. And their they're state people are also like reliable in a sense. Like they don't actually get engaged in corruption. Or, no, they don't. Like they really respect their society, their people. And they just act accordingly, like, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like in their mentality, like it's a historical right. thing. Yeah, that's the impression that I get from from Sweden, actually. Um, a lot of the Netherland countries, but, you know, Sweden in particular, that, um, that that's how it is. And I, I know it's more I don't like using uh, certain words like a lot of the isms, uh, you know, instantly people have an idea and a perception when you say a certain word. Um, but I, I know they're more socialist overall, um, with, uh, different things with healthcare and with, uh, you know, leave. Yeah. It's got to do with their history. Yeah. It's like all their mentality and understandings and worldviews, but you can track it back to their histories. Yeah. You have to look at their backgrounds and right. the histories. Like, yeah, it's going to be, can be done with, with all the nations I think, on earth. Like you have to look at their history, like to what they've been through. Like, like for example, in the United States, why you have this gun gun laws? I mean, why you have this, you know, this freedom of carrying gun? Because it was the history, right? Like you know, when when people from Europe went to the United States, there were like very vast lands. And you have to have a gun to protect yourself. I mean, to be able to protect yourself and it to was, hunt, of course, and stuff. Yeah, but... it was a, it was the necessity, that right? Mm-hmm. It, it was needed at those times, like because without the guns, you could get like you know killed mm-hmm. by all these looters and stuff like that. And you had to have it. So I mean, it was like a part of the history, in a sense. Well, everything is a history, you know, from from nations yeah, I mean, to individuals. In communist and socialist states, like, yeah, I mean, guns are very strict. I mean, you can't carry, like, only select people can have it. Yeah, and it's, it's controlled very strictly. In a I see. Way. Only the police, I think, can have it. And they must have, like, psychological checkup every month or something like that. Ah, uh, well, that's good. <laughs> that, that's the issue the United States has now. Yeah. Anybody can get it. Just, just pay the money and just take. It. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they supposedly have background checks, um, but it's like most things. There's all kinds of loopholes. Like you, yeah. Can, but most of those sellers, they're interested in selling. Like, you exactly. Know, they don't care about psychological checkups. They well, just care about their money that they make out from them. Those people like by selling. Well, so it's it's like in a profit system, right? And, and you know that, Sam. But that's that's the problem in general is when you when the world yeah. lives by a profit system. That's all most people are concerned with. But still, I mean, history and mentality has got a big role to play. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And like I said, in in, in life, you know, in countries and with people, um, and so that's why. Uh, I, I really, man, I don't judge. I've been through so much in my life and I never have been much of a judgmental type person. Um, but I'm, I'm, you, you don't have to be afraid. I mean, there's no political correctness stuff. I mean, just say what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You right. may have heard some others' feelings, but still, I mean, you just you have to tell the, well, you how can, it looks like, I mean, the you can say the same. Th- yeah. And you can say the same thing a lot of different ways too. You know, I mean, if, if you're wrong on something, I can say, "Hey, you know, you're you're actually incorrect about yeah, this." Yeah, that's because, common sense, man. Yeah, you that's know, right? Yeah. So, you know, we we're living. I mean, I, especially in the United States and then in Europe and Western Europe, you got this political this this problem of political correctness. You know, yeah. Like old George George Carlin always wants to. <laughs> well, you got this political politically correct wording systems and right. sentences. 
they just say things you know they just make it very soft i don't know i mean yeah yeah i know like and the society is getting very sensitive about it like you know but sometimes you just have to tell things for what they really are i mean yeah i mean you know like there should be judgment in everything i think i mean yeah because when you when people are murdering and killing and bombing i mean they need to be judged right there's no other way of doing it right you you can't just politically correctly say and tell these people like but other things like yeah you know, i mean judge judging judging sense should be I me mean, it's a nece- necessary stuff mm-hmm. in in human life i think yeah it's common sense i think i believe yeah well it is right i mean it's inevitable sometimes and uh, of course we're all products of our environment and you can you know always like you said with the history point back to why somebody ended up the way they did or did an act that they did but that's that's something at least in the united states in the so-called yes people get this feeling of getting hurt i mean like you know they don't really think about why they're getting hurt maybe they're afraid or they don't want to hear the reality of what like are just are they just hiding behind these words a lot of times <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a lot of a group mentality that i've seen is it um, is it like a like a guilt of some kind like um yeah i think it's i don't know i think it's really just a uh, a, a safeness a comfortableness you know people Mm. you know uh, for they don't, want, they don't want to get called names and labels yeah or, yeah People are afraid it's that. a it's a lot easier to go with the flow than it is to go against the grain and that's exactly what the, the swedish people do i mean here they go with the flow They're absolutely like 100 percent politically correct yeah right <laughs> they like it <laughs> they like it huh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like when you're saying something, explaining something, telling the person something, this person never, never, ever, like, you know, goes against you. Like these people are always in in understanding. Like, yeah, they, they always agree with you and stuff like that, I even see. if they don't, mm-hmm. you know, they have this tendency. Well, you said it's funny because you, you compared it to Canada. You say you've been to Canada as well, right? Not yet. Oh, okay. I passed in North America, not yet. Oh, okay. I got you. Well, that's the um, what people say about Canadians is that they're like, like overly friendly, and you know, yeah, they're politically democratic kind of liberal people. Yeah, yeah, overly overly liberal in a sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's there's a thin line. I think these people are in a sense like they have some this kind of belief system. Yeah, I think it's. It's like a religion, a new religion in a sense, like being overly liberal and democratic, overly tolerant. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, anything is, of course, basically a belief system, religion, uh, laws, uh, you know, it's something you believe in or you don't. And that's what I mean about the uh, the group mentality. I, I, you know, a lot of people are... <laughs> Yeah, but they're overly t- tolerant on ev- all these matters like gay system, gays and all these you know lesbians about these political systems democracy but they're never tolerant i mean they're they never care like or they're absolutely indifferent when it comes to poverty and hunger and war you know right these things <laughs> they don't i mean these things really do not interest these people i don't understand why they get hurt by these words, like, you know, this very simple things. And when it comes to very important things like, you know, this discrimination, let's say visa regimes, like closing the borders, this poverty and homelessness, mm-hmm. you know, when, when these things does not interest these people, I think somehow. It is strange, they, isn't it? And they're like ignored. Yeah. And these issues are ignored. I mean, because these, I think, the humanity must be hurt by these things, like why we we still have poverty, why we still have hunger, why we still have this, you know, 
closing of the borders of territories, mm -hmm. visa regimes, like why we discriminate people according to their nationality, why we discriminate people according to their passports, and like why we <clears throat> close the borders, you know? I think these are the issues that has to, I mean, that everybody has to be heard of. Exactly. They're, those are the important issues. I mean, uh, yeah. all the issues are important. You know, if you want to be able to marry your, your, your gay lover, I mean, that's fine. Do your thing. And I understand yeah, that's wanting personal that. personal stuff. But yeah. exactly. Like, that's uh, right. But you, you'll protest for that, but you, they don't, you don't see people in general protesting and saying like about all this inequality. Millions of people are getting hurt by this climate stuff, you know? But they they don't yeah. maybe they're just being you know led by some cult groups I don't know like some agenda I don't know maybe these people are being orchestrated by groups that which want carbon tax you know right it's like a as business as usual in a sense like they just want to carbon tax everyone now yeah they just they just want more taxes you know carbon like they want to uh, tax your carbon footprint you know. <laughs> Yeah. Like just because you are breathing the air. <laughs> you, you are exhaling CO2. By this planet. It's your fault. Yeah, and they're you're polluting the atmosphere, man. <laughs> you're polluting the earth. Yeah, could you stop breathing, <laughs> they please? Care more about this, these things, you know. <laughs> they they don't never meant but they never mention about poverty and homelessness and hunger and wars and these things they don't care. Well, you, you know, and, and and you just ask yourself like what the hell is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I know it's kind of strange to me too, man, how, how people react to. They and, don't, I mean, they react to everything except the important. Well, ones. except like, the big things, right? People, the the yeah, things that I mean, really people, matter. They get very absolutely emotional like, when it comes to rugby, football, basketball, you know, that's, they get very emotional. Yeah. Like, when it comes to things that really matter, people's lives, like, Food shortages, like you know, income, salaries, right? Like you know, poverty, homelessness, housing. These things they don't they, they don't care about these things. Like maybe they're conditioned in a different way. Oh, well, they you are. Know? They are. They, well, they're conditioned, and again, it's the group mentality. I, I see this a lot. Um, and how can you? And after all this, how can you not believe in conspiracy theories? You know, right? About this, all of these agendas and stuff like that because because you clearly see that you know all these people's emotions you know their cares their their empathy are being they're being directed to things that really doesn't matter you know right this gay lesbian issue this climate issue and they're being directed to something else like you know but like it's it's not going to solve anything well you all know again it's what you big things it's what you see, you know, so if you're, you know, you turn on the TV, uh, you see climate, you know, protests, you turn on this, you see the climate, you turn, you know, you go to work and people's talking about it and then it becomes a thing, you know, then it becomes real when it's just repeated enough. And that's what's in people's face. Um, you know, I, I get so, I don't know, hopeless, you know, when I see these things happening, I'm seeing like many billions and millions of people worrying about things that really don't matter like you know climate yeah it's a distraction this climate thing it's it's something that's beyond our control you know like you can't change the climate by yourself or by a million or even billion people's their car exhausts you know their their stuff they make they eat doesn't really add up i mean to change any climate that doesn't do anything but those issues like, you know, food shortages, housing, these things we can solve, man. Right, exactly. I mean, but that's, why we're not doing these things? Yeah, that's the thing. It, this stuff can be solved. I mean, we already have the answer. We already yeah, have. I mean, we ha like, as George Carlin, you know, these, his words, he's talking about things like, pack your shit, walks. We're living, we're going away. Not, you know, the planet is staying. Right. All the climate shit. I mean, the atmosphere. It's not going anywhere, you know? We are going. Yeah, exactly. We have issues. Like, we haven't learned how to be friends with each other. We haven't learned how to be whole. I mean, we haven't learned how to live good lives. But we care about snails. We care about birds. I don't know. We care about the planet. And we're worried about saving the 
saving the planet, like, you know? The it's, planet has been in this for four and a half billion years. It has been more... It has been through lots of things, like, you know, meteor bombardment. It's been through, like, you know, Earth changes of all kinds, volcanic eruptions, and it has it's okay now, you know, it has survived. Right. Like why are we worrying about things that really that we can't change anything? I mean. But we're not we're not focusing on our own problems. Yeah, we're, we're not, not solving the things that we can solve, you know? Right, right. Our elites, this our greedy governments, our elites I mean, they can solve these problems easily in a year or two if they want. They got tons of money. They got money printing machines out there. They can do it right. if they want, but somehow they don't want to do it. But and they're distracting us, all these millions and billions of people into different unimportant things that they can't do anything about. Right. Yeah. It's big issues. I can't see the common sense in people. Yeah. I really can't. I mean, how can this be happening in the 21st century when where there's a lot of knowledge? technological ingenuity and you know knowledge all of our energies are being wasted some to something i I think yeah it's all it's it's almost all misdirected energy uh i mean and kind of like the sports like you were talking uh, you know in and of itself i don't think there's anything wrong with sports or entertainment or that kind of stuff but yeah so many people they can sit there and tell you all about a certain um, team or a league and what player went Jack where. Damon, but that's not interesting, isn't it? But no, then, it doesn't, it no. doesn't solve anything. Well, it, and, and that's, yeah, again, that's by itself, that's fine. But when you ask that same person where that dollar comes from in their pocket and they don't know. They have no idea how the money works or why, you know. That's where you lose me. It's one thing to be into something as as long as you understand and about what the real issues are and why things are. Because those a lot of those people that don't understand really how the money works and why things are the way that they are, the people still complain. You know, so they'll still yeah. say, "Oh yeah, this person's this and that company's that," and uh, you know, but you don't understand it at all. But you know everything about this sports team. Yeah, blame their educational system, their schooling system. Well, it, it it's it's a little bit of everything, really. I mean, um, but I, I feel that excuses go out the window at some point. I mean, everybody's brought up in some you know type of um, government or regime or schooling system or belief process, but at some point everybody's different, but you know it might be fifteen years old for some twenty for others, forty for some others, but at some point in your life, you have to start thinking for yourself and you have to yeah, start no, questioning think, yeah, you're right in an age of information, like ignorance is a choice it's a sense. choice yeah. exactly Sam. It, it sure and a is. lot of people are choosing not to care, you know. They just care about their own lives, their own financial independence, they, about their money. And yeah, I mean, we have millions and billions of people who are on this mode, you know. Like, they only care about themselves, about their little the, environment they, and families, and they just ignore everything else, everyone else, except the circle. They do, and uh, I I I um, agree with that, and um, and I don't I don't believe that I look at stuff, you know. Um, I, I just what I'm trying to say is I really think it's everybody is a product of their environment, and when you feel no matter where you're at, if you're in a so-called third world country, obviously you're going to feel it 10 times yeah. more. But even if you're, you know, say in the United States or some other country and you're so-called doing okay and that type of stuff, but you still see everything around you, you still see all the hate, anger, despair, you know? And so it, I think that on human psyche, it kind of makes you like, you know, retort to, I have to protect mine. I have to take care of me and this. And cause you know, everybody's out for themselves and it, it, it creates that mindset. Yeah, of course, man, we have emo plus emotions, like, you know, exactly like, tit for tat. Like, you know, if somebody doesn't care about you, you automatically 
I mean, your ego says like, if if that person doesn't care about you, then why you should, you know? Right. Just fuck her. Fuck them. Exactly. You care about only yourself. Like it's our ego, yeah. Exactly. It's and ego. It's, ego is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ego is something is a very powerful force, actually. It is. But you have to you have to formulate it positively. You know, if you formulate it negatively, you'll become. Uh, the whole world is like this. Like people don't care. Like they don't. They don't give a shit. You know. Mm -hmm. Then why you should care about them? Like you know, you you find you you condition yourself in right. a negative way. Yes. And that's very dangerous it's because very dangerous. we have been living like this for centuries now. You know, we have been. Yeah, our mindsets have been like this. Like we were saying to ourselves, "Oh, our enemies are trying to kill us. Like, right. Why shouldn't we?" care about them like yeah we should we kill them also you know all these wa um, wars and conflicts they were this they were the process of this negative negative conditioning in a sense like you know it's like we say oh look nature is very wild nature is very ruthless so you know it's like a social darwinism like yeah things right. are like this so I have to care about myself. I don't. I don't have to care about others because I have to survive. You know, in a sense, like and million. And while you have, you have like millions and billions of people doing this shit, it becomes chaos. Yeah, because exactly. we are actually using all our energies to to kill each other, to right. rub each other, you know, to keep each other out. And as as you see, like yeah, we're living in houses we don't even talk to our neighbors like you know we're living in a world full of dis despair we're full of, we're living in a world full of hopelessness because you know if you will get if you if you if you will not have anything else to eat now like if you get homeless nobody cares about you so we have, you know we're our minds, I mean, our belief systems are making the system that we're living in, I think. It's not a, only the governments, I think. It's the no. core of the problem is in people, I think, in the society, like because in our belief systems. Exactly. It's because our... we have negatively conditioned ourselves to the extent that we believe in it, you know? Right, right. We have become, we have made it our reality. In a right, sense. exactly. We're living in our own prisons, and we believe that it's real. But the time has come to change it somehow, I think. Well, I do believe the mindset is changing, Sam. I, I really do. Um, I, you know, I'm with you, like what you said earlier, about how in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. You're totally right. And a lot of people will choose to remain ignorant. But a lot won't. Yeah. A lot won't. And a lot are looking for the answers and finding the answers and understanding more of the truth. And I really think the the world in general is shifting towards um, a more uh, awake consciousness of, of yeah, being aware of something is and one thing, but not doing about it in another thing. Like, yeah, that's like true. Maybe lots of people are aware that things are fucked up, you know, but they are refusing to change because still, I mean, we have egos. Yeah. We, we, do. we have egos and we can't and it's very hard to change your ego if you're in living in this absolutely horrible environment that which is just you know re like you know it, it's just encouraging your ego like oh the world is like this nobody cares about you like uh, this monetary system the profit system is like this it's like you know you can't change it because on your own like you know there has to be some kind of, I think, movement. Like, until we start doing something, nothing will change. Like, as Jack Rusko has told, yeah, you may believe it, you may know about it, you may be aware of it, but if you don't do anything, nothing will change. It's been, like, I think, 10 years since the Zeitgeist films have been released. It was 2008, I think. But still, I mean, yeah, people are aware. They may be aware, but still, they're still serving the system. And they're still serving the system of the elites. Well, they are, but you know, again, Sam, it's, I think it's difficult to kind of sum that up in, in a gen, in one statement because there is so many factors. There's so many elements of why things happen, why they continue, why people think, you know, what they do. Um, 
you know, like, okay, take me, for example. I totally understand. I see things very clearly. I, because I know. Yeah, we're all on a wheel of wage slavery, man. But right. We have you're, to earn to get going. You Keep are, going. people are still stuck in a lot of ways. Um, because you, the system is built this way. You know? It's ingrained. It's system. Right, right. Yeah. If you don't do this, the system will punish you, you know. You still have to pay the bills. And you, you know what you're going to do? You still have to step on this wheelchair. I mean, this wheel, turning wheel of this waste slavery because there's no other way of doing it other way. Like You still constantly have to earn money. And when you are constantly earning money, you will not have time to, for doing any other things right. that you enjoy, you know? Exactly. It's like, it's like um, I don't know, it's like a turning wheel of, you know, we, 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 we can't, it's really hard to get out of it, I mean. I it, think we sometimes. Sometimes I think like maybe we need some some people like Elon Musk. I don't know, but Elon Musk is working on things technological stuff, but nobody is working on social stuff. Well, I tell you, social let me things like now that you mentioned Elon Musk. Let me tell you. Recently, I read something about the um, the new battery that they um, have created uh, that it's already functional, um, and they say that it will. Uh, it can go for a hundred thousand miles or, or, or no, no, it was a ridiculous amount, but it's really beside the point. If you look up, I forget exactly what the technology was, but it's an, it's a new breakthrough that they have and what they did, whether or not it was for PR or not, it, it really is almost uh, doesn't Sometimes matter. People ex exaggerate things too much. Well, what they yeah. did was though, Sam, it, they, they shared the technology with other other people that do that and see that is huge that's something that a lot of people really i don't think understand how inhibiting this cap or, or profit-based monetary system is because like that for example if if that imagine if that happened with everything in life if they've if somebody if you have all these people working on say a, a battery for example and then this one company comes out with a better way to do it what you have in this system now they will patent that idea and nobody can have access yeah. to it nobody can use it they will it. make sure that it will not work out well it's not even that it's that they it's justified by saying well they put all this money and time and research into it so they get to reap the rewards from it but one not only are you con consolidating wealth in that sense unnecessarily but even on a bigger picture you are inhibiting the world from having access to an improvement and you have you're you're preventing other people who are working on the same thing of you know say say I'm working on a, a cure for cancer well it, some of that may be a little different but a lot of the technology technological aspects you know if if they come up if apple whoever comes up with something better they will patent it Instead of saying, look, this is what we have discovered. So now all you other people working on it, you can start from this point. See, but they'll, they'll keep that information for two or three or five or however long the patent is good for. They will keep that information secret. So in all those you years, know, yeah, you have these people good, working like, from behind. Yeah, I'm seeing Elon Musk doing lots of stuff, but it's not really affecting any lives of people. I think it's just. I think these people are working for themselves, like they're selling their products and getting money. And well, just continuing the this profit system. It's on a grand scale. What Tesla is doing, it's definitely on a grand scale. I mean, when you make hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar cars, and you're building spaceships, it costs money, man. To buy oh, those exactly, cars. exactly. It's not free, you know. That's that's the that's the that's the million dollar question, man. Like. Even if you do something useful in the society, you still have to charge money on exactly. it. Exactly, you know? and that just and, and like and it just annihilates it. Everything you do, like you know, because if it costs money, what other poor people are gonna do? <laughs> They'll be automatically outstripped of this of this thing, you know. Right. That's yeah. that's the million dollar question. Like, yeah, if you are rich, then you'll be getting use of it. Well, part of part of what I want to do here with this is, is also to put the ideas out there and, and have people think like, for example, 
what you just said. That's another huge factor that I've thought about a lot. You know, it, it, I'm thinking of the, the ludicrousness of this, where you have a technology, say, like on a car, for example, you have the little on the rear view mirrors, on the side mirrors, you have the little light that comes on saying somebody is in your blind spot, right? That's yeah. a that's a new advance. Well, newer advancement, right? Who in their right mind? I want that. So I don't hit you. And if you can't afford it and you can't have it, you're going to hurt me as well. Because, as as I mean. see, but that's what I mean. So it's crazy. So you're literally preventing the that type of stuff. You know, when you when elites, I mean, as much as elites are keeping most of the people poor, they know that they have, and I mean, they can influence on them, you know. And unfortunately, they'll be still interested to keeping billions of people poor. Because they want to use them as slaves. It, right. It's a control thing. It really is. Yeah. I mean, they're not interested in losing losing these people, you know, from their, like, they want to keep them dependent and busy. And still, these millionaires, millionaires will not be interested in doing the social things to help people out. Most... Unfortunately, we'll be seeing this capitalist system just, you know, getting just, it will just getting it, it will deteriorate itself I think. It, exactly sam it, it will and that's kind of the irony to me of it 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 inevitably is going to consume itself it has to because it's spe- yeah. especially with the automation i mean you know if i own a company and i employ a thousand people and i can automate half of that so i only employ 500 i'm going so to it's do gonna, it it's gonna make like 99 percent of the Jobless, right. hopeless, so and pe- hungry. Right. So people won't have purchasing power to keep the system, the market system going, which, of course, so it, it demands will just that. Be pushing people, you know, it will be just be pushing people, you know. The, have you seen this Justin Timberlake's Time movie? Uh, and Ele- no. Elysian? Elysian. I haven't. Yeah. I don't watch a whole uh, lot of movies, it, but... No, it's it's a movie about like billionaires building their super super uh, orbital super orbital system, like and all the pe- poor people will be left on Earth, you know. Oh, I see. All, only the billionaires will be living good lives. So I think we're we're heading to that thing. I think now all the billionaires will be living in one part of the world, while like ninety nine percent of the poor people. And the service personnel will be living in a different, more poverty-stricken parts of the world. Well, as desperate as... I think we're going to that. As desperate as that sounds... We're still living in that, I think. And we're still... I mean, we're we're already living in it. Yeah, we are. kind of world. Yeah. Not to the left and right. They're not over here. We're not over there. They're, you know, they're mixed Uh in. But that's essentially what you have. I mean, that's a social, uh, structural violence, um, structural violence in, a, in, in place. Yeah, exactly. You're already seeing it. Like, yeah, if you're poor and if you go to hospital, you will not get treated. And you're, you'll be left out, you know? And, and, and we're still seeing it these days, man. You, you have tramps, you have homeless people who are just, you know, living, just, you know, they're just living on our behinds. They're living with us, man. Yeah, in right. The streets. Right. Are we caring about them? No. Well, you, you they're know, just dying out here. You know. In general, Nobody was really interested. I, of course, there's there's egotistical, really self centered, egotistical people who don't care. I think in general, people do care, but again, you have a system that is it's hard to get around. Like for example, in the United States, there's. Four or five hundred thousand, I think, uh, full blown 24 seven homeless people, give or take a hundred thousand or whatever, somewhere in that area. And you have at the exact same time that and they're putting spikes, yeah, instead of helping. Well, you <laughs> have, you already have the homeless. People are putting spikes on them, you know, so that they will not be sleeping there <laughs> in those, in those places. Like how, how indifferent you can be, how violent you can be to, to do these things to these people, man, putting spikes on them. 
what do you mean putting spikes? spikes on benches i mean oh, oh putting spikes on benches well you see again that's what i mean sam it, it's it is crazy it's barbaric and it's inhumane don't get me yeah, wrong I mean, but st- people accept that as normal man they don't that's, care that's more important is that you don't that's, have outrage that's new norm- normality we have in society right but, people don't care i mean they they care about gays and lesbians more man they care about climate more than they do care about homeless people than they care about hungry people you know I mean, a lot of what you're saying is true, of course, and I... What kind of beings we are, man? Are we civilized yet? Oh, of course not. <laughs> yeah. We're seeing these things, actually complaining to our governments, to our repres- like elected officials, our, represent- right. our representatives, like, what people are doing, man? Nothing. We're not civilized, we're not advanced, and we're not intelligent. Because if we were, yeah. society would be totally different than what it is. But we, 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 but we like to boast about it, our civilization, right. our it goes mind, back to the how ego. intelligent we really are. <laughs> yeah, it goes back to the ego, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep, stroke your ego. It makes you feel better, you know? It's the same thing, Sam, when, um, you know, people will... They'll they'll give money to a charity. They'll send five or ten or fifty or a hundred dollars to a charity, and that makes them feel good. They say, "Ah, hey, see, I just did good in the world." And they believe that they have changed something, and, yeah. But, <laughs> right, but the reality is, you didn't and do not anything. Realizing that all of the like most of this money will be going to different pockets, right? Of those poor. Well, it's public knowledge that no charity donates a hundred percent. None, not Salvation Army, not Goodwill. I think. I mean, in the United States, there were two couples. They collected, I think, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and they were collecting money for these people who suffered from, like, these hurricanes. You know, hurricanes. Right. And it 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 was cleared out that these couple just, you know, they just ate like ninety nine percent of this money, and they didn't give it to anyone. You have two fundamental flaws um, when it comes to charitable things. One is, of course, the greed and corruption that goes along with it. But even on the flip side, even corruption if corruption is in the built in in the monetary system, man. Well, it is. It <laughs> it's is just the feature of it. Well, let me say this also about the the charity. Uh, they, you know, the charities that have done things. Like, for example, I saw a um, kind of a documentary with this shoe company. It used to be on TV here in the states, where they said, "If you buy a pair of our shoes, we'll give a pair of shoes free to someone who needs it in another country." And they enter another. Yeah, it's just another PR. Like, when, well, it's when PR. Rich politicians saying, yeah, when rich politicians saying, "Oh, I'm gonna donate like all this money to the poor." But in reality, they never do. Well, most things are PR. Almost everything. You know, I make a joke uh, that anytime a commercial ends, a- anytime a commercial ends, you can say the same thing. You can go, right. <laughs> but we, we feel it's it, it's all man. BS. But we feel, I mean, I think everybody knows about it. I mean, they still feel it. I mean, that this money will not be given. It's just a simple, it's a quick fix, you know, instead of actually doing something or speaking out or trying to make, you know, a real change, you just send a hundred dollars off and say, see, I just, I did good. I helped somebody and you know, it's, it's a quick fix, but it's not, it's not a fix at all, actually. Um, but you know, I was really amazed, you know, when Donald Trump was elected as as president, because this guy just stiffed, I think, a lot of constructive companies, you know, construction companies to money, man. Did, did you know about that? He, he did what? He stiffed, like, you know, he didn't give money to the companies that build his oh, hotels. I, I heard parts that he, he did that and filed bankruptcy. And I, I truthfully, I don't get involved with a lot of the and gossip. You know, how but... can such people, such people? Become so successful in the system. Well, like, because the system rewards still, it. Yeah, I mean, this bank still continue giving money to these people, millions and millions of dollars, and they don't care about these people being. I mean, they're stiffing their people. I mean, they're they're not giving money to these people who worked I mean, to build constructions for these people. You know. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, he, because. These people, I mean, they know how the legal system works, yeah? They, they, they pay out the, the attorneys, and they know how to get what they want from the system. Exactly. 
that's part two of the control. It's, it's, it's ran and controlled in two ways. It's through the money and through the laws. So, you know, if you mess up on one, you just buy you, out the you, judges, right. you know, and then they, they just get whatever they want, whatever decision they want. Yeah. I mean, the, the so-called and, legal system is a joke. It's totally corrupt. And you, and you have like lobby, lobby system in the United States. Yeah, exactly. Like you can give hundred thousand dollars to each congressman and you can bribe up what you want that's the fun part of it man <laughs> <laughs> right yeah and you got it that's what it is it's 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 whatever I mean, word they use the lobbyists, system is but... easy to play you know it's easy to play once you're rich right it it's sure easy is. to get away it's easy to deceive other people it's easy to stiff it's easy to rub and donald trump knows about this a lot i think yeah, he knows how to play the game. Well, to be really any successful business person, you have to know how to play the game, or you're not going to be successful at it. I mean, that goes. No, and and the, and and the fun part is like if you don't do these things, your your competitors will be doing it. You know, right. they'll be just tearing you apart, like in the wild in the natural world. <laughs> exactly right. It creates. You have competitive. to kill and you have to fight. <laughs> Not to be able to get torn by by your competitors. Yeah, see, and that's but that's what I was saying that um, you know we're all products of our environment. So yeah, you always have a choice to do right or wrong or good or bad. But it's unrealistic it, to say that yeah. you know people aren't going to take advantage or you know put somebody else out of business or these types of things because it's a competitive system that. The only yeah, way to only win the it. Wishes, you know. That's all. That's only the wishes that people want from a absolutely, like from the absolutely ruthless system. You know, it's like destructive system. It was built in like this. Yeah. There's, there's no chance that it's going to realize what our wishes. You know? It doesn't work that way. And we don't know how to change it. We don't know how to how to transform it. While that's a somber note to end this episode on, I'd like to thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. If you go in the description, you should find a link to my show's homepage with my contact info. Please feel free to email, follow, share, comment, like, subscribe. I welcome any and all feedback or support. And I hope you'll tune in next time for another episode of the All Real Show. We are...